Hello, my beautiful devs. My name is Mina and I'll be your host for today. So I was watching the new Gossip Girl reboot because I'm hip. Only the pilot has been released so far, but I think by the time this video will come out, probably episode two as well. I'm planning to do a Gossip Girl dedicated video once the season is over, but uh, for now, I wanted to talk about a phenomenon that has always kind of bothered me and it's something I was reminded of while watching the show. And that is the representation of teen characters in teen TV dramas. I don't usually watch teen TV dramas, to be honest. I think the appeal of watching 20-somethings engage in high school antics kind of lost their appeal for me once I graduated high school. But when I was in middle school, I was really obsessed with Degrassi, um, Glee, I know, uh, Make It or Break It, The Vampire Diaries. That's Nutrition is abysmal at this school. You know what this is? Toilet brush. Teen Wolf. I also watched a little bit of The Secret Life of the American Teenager and Pretty Little Liars, but I wasn't like a dedicated fan for those ones. I actually didn't even watch the original Gossip Girl when it was airing and I tried to start watching it about a couple months ago and I've been chugging along with that one. I want to watch it just because I know it's like a cultural touchstone, but it's just a little bit difficult to get through now in 2021. As a middle schooler, I think I was definitely more impressionable when it came to teenage dramas because I wasn't in high school yet. So my perception of what high schoolers looked like and acted like were entirely based on these TV shows. Now that I'm older, I know that these characters do not look like they're 14, they look like they're 26. And that's because most of the time the actors who play these characters are in their 20s. So today what I really want to talk about is adult actors playing teenage characters and how that changes our perception of what content is or isn't appropriate. There will be some spoilers for the Gossip Girl reboot pilot episode and Pretty Little Liars. I'm also going to be subbing in the word snacks occasionally instead of sex because YouTube has censorship issues even though everything I say is fully educational so I just don't want to get in trouble. First, I want to address why adults play teen characters to begin with because usually the reason is not actually sinister at all. According to casting director Todd Thaler, it's all because of the labor laws. The number of hours that children are allowed to work are highly restricted, which limits the amount of time that producers can actually have adolescents on set. In the end, many casting directors choose to go with an 18-year-old because they can be on set and working for, say, 16, 18 hours. There are, of course, some actors who are underage. Molly Ringwald, for instance, was 16 when shooting The Breakfast Club, but that's because director John Hughes thought she was the best fit for the role. I am totally fine with adults playing teens. I prefer it. As we've seen from countless tragic stories, a lot of child stars get abused or groomed in the industry. So by casting more real life children, it's also exposing more children to the predators in the Hollywood machine. But I do think that there are some issues that arise from casting adults as teenage characters. Teacher-student relationships are, unfortunately, a fairly common trope. We've seen it in Dawson's Creek, One Troy Hill, The Original Gossip Girl, Riverdale, etc., etc. These relationships are obviously bad. They tend to romanticize a completely inappropriate age gap and power dynamic. I've always thought this trope was extremely weird, even as a child, and I struggle to grapple with who these relationship dynamics are supposed to pander to even. If the intended audience is supposed to be children, then that's extremely gross and irresponsible because it feeds them this idea that um, it's totally safe, normal, and even aspirational to bone your teacher. And if the intended audience is adults, then... What's your emergency? The reason why TV shows get away with this is because all the actors are adults. So obviously when we're watching a show that visually portrays two consenting adults, it raises less red flags. These shows also tend to cast young, attractive actors who are close to the same real life age of their students. So yeah, if you see two people in their 20s hooking up, it looks totally normal. Doubly appealing if they're both attractive. But we have to keep in mind that these characters are teenagers, so they can't consent to relationships with adults, especially ones in positions of authority. 
teachers and 18 year old students should still not be in relationships because there is still that power imbalance and that makes these relationships unsafe for the students. I've seen some people say that when it comes to explicit content in teen dramas like Euphoria or Skins that it's okay because it's real and students are sleeping around even with their teachers sometimes and we shouldn't censor these experiences. To an extent, I agree, but at the same time, can we really say that a relationship like Ezra and Arya is realistic? For those who've never watched Pretty Little Liars, Ezra Fitz is a high school English teacher and Arya Montgomery is his student. They meet at a club outside of school and hook up, and when he realizes that he's her teacher, he still continues to encourage this relationship. Arya's parents, who become aware of the relationship, start off angry, but then grow to accept it. And then, if it couldn't get any worse, Ezra is outed as having a past of predating on young girls, and the pair get married in the final season. The framing of the story is so irresponsible. I'd be upset personally, but I could maybe tolerate an incorporation of a teacher-student romance if, and only if, it was criticized in the show, framed negatively, and if Ezra went to jail at the end. It's what she deserves. But in what world? Would parents be okay with their 16-year-old daughter sleeping and having a relationship with her English teacher? And also, Ezra and Arya didn't even get married in the books. The writers just threw that in because a lot of fans were shipping it. And that's already a huge red flag. Like, if people are romanticizing and supporting this kind of relationship, then you've done an irresponsible job as a writer. But that's not all. They sold official merch t-shirts that read I Heart Mr. Fitz on them. Like, I cannot even fathom how genuinely effed up you have to be to sell shirts promoting put a to underage girls. The new Gossip Girl reboot also really bothered me with its representation of teachers. In the pilot episode, it's revealed right away that the teachers are Gossip Girl because they all peaked in high school and desperately need therapy. But something I noticed immediately when they introduced the teachers is that they're all very young. I mean, Tavi Gevinson, who plays the main teacher, is 25 in real life, and Jordan Alexander, who plays one of the students, is 27. If the teachers and the students are around the same real life age, it feels like the teachers have less authority and makes it seem like they're on equal footing with the students. Thankfully, I think most people on my Twitter feed still question the ethics of teachers cyberbullying their students, but imagine if the teachers were in their 40s or 50s or 60s, which is honestly the age that most of my high school teachers were. It would just be so clearly inappropriate for them to be spreading rumors about their students and taking photos of their students changing. Yes, that happens. I should be arrested. They were standing in front of a window. Anyone could have seen them. One, one, what's your emergency? Another downside to having adults play teenage characters is that they have adult bodies. And that can create a complex for teens watching who are comparing themselves to these people who are fully past the age of puberty. Plus, you know how the Hollywood machine works. 99% of the time, the main characters are played by conventionally attractive people as well. So not only as a 15-year-old are you comparing yourself to a 25-year-old, you're comparing yourself to a very hot 25-year-old. Game changer. Archie got hot. He's got abs now. Barbara Greenberg, a clinical psychologist and teen and family expert, says that by casting adult actors to play teenagers, it can give the message that teenagers are supposed to look good all the time. In reality, some days they're thinner, they're a little heavier, they have pimples, their hair is a little frizzy. It's all okay. So when actors look good in every scene and in every episode, it can make teenagers feel self-conscious or alone. But again, like just because an adult plays a teen character doesn't mean that this has to be the outcome. Framing is once again such an important part of writing these stories. I would argue that a show like Riverdale really emphasizes the actor's maturity. The characters are dressed, dare I say, not like teenagers. Granted, I've only watched a couple episodes of Riverdale because I really could not get along any further, but the way that Betty and Veronica are styled makes them look like adults. And it's really important for the costume designer to nail the character's ages because you're already hiring older people. And if you dress them older, then 
they're not going to resemble teenagers at all. They're gonna be bad representations of teenagers. I was watching Sex Education for the first time a couple days ago. It's a TV show on Netflix and it's amazing. I absolutely love it. I thought the costume designer Rosa Diaz did a fantastic job dressing the characters because the actors are all in their 20s, but they dress like teens and therefore look more like teens. Eric wears a lot of mismatching patterns that reflect his fun personality, but also show that he's still experimenting with his style. He hasn't gotten things fully figured out yet. There's also a great scene where he runs into an older black gay man and then a following scene where he copies that man's style because he's impressionable and a child. Otis wears pretty much the same color blocking jacket throughout the whole show because he's just a white teenage boy who doesn't really care about fashion. A lot of the characters wear training bras and unsexy childish underwear rather than, you know, Victoria's Secret lingerie. I'm not saying that all teenagers dress really young. There are definitely teenagers who wear IMG and who like wearing skimpy outfits, but when the actors are older, it's important to dress them on the young side to compensate for that age gap. A teen coming of age movie that I think did a really good job is Lady Bird. Saoirse was, I think, 23, so clearly over the age of a high school senior. But you know, she wears a pinafore over a t-shirt, a look that is very young. Her clothes are kind of perpetually disheveled to show how she doesn't really care about anything. And then it's only at the end when she goes off to college when she wears a blazer and looks more put together to show how she's now an adult and taking her life seriously. But an interesting detail in this movie that I didn't even know until I looked into it is that during production, Saoirse Ronan actually said she had an acne breakout. And the makeup artist asked her if she would be okay letting her acne show, and she said yes. Saoirse said, I thought it was a really good opportunity to let a teenager's face in a movie actually look like a teenager's face in real life. And the director of the movie, Greta Gerwig, also said this, all I see in movies about teenage girls is they have perfect skin and perfect hair. And the reality of teenagers is they don't, and it doesn't make them less beautiful. What I'm mainly trying to get at is that I really wish adult actors were dressed and presented as teenagers in these TV shows and movies. Because when they just look and act like adults, it gives the impression to teenagers that they should look and act like adults themselves. When there's no representation of what teenagers actually look like and act like on screen, that can lead to something called symbolic annihilation. Symbolic annihilation describes a situation in which the absence of a certain group from mass media depictions implies that members of the group are so lacking in value as to be unworthy of representation. This is why it's really important to have strong minority representation in film and TV, but on a more general note, not having realistic depictions of what teenagers look like, aka with imperfect skin and imperfect hair in the media can make a lot of teenagers feel unworthy or not normal. I actually took a survey on my Instagram asking people what they thought about sex scenes and teen dramas and an overwhelming majority said they didn't like it, they thought it was too graphic, too voyeuristic, or too glamorized. And I kind of took that survey just to see what other people thought about it, to see if anyone thought the same thing as I did, and they did. I have those opinions as well. I also specifically wanted to see how teens reacted to this because I think a lot of adults, including myself, kind of forget what it was like to be a teenager watching this kind of content. One 13 year old said, it's so stupid and overrated. It puts such a bad influence on girls my age. A 16-year-old said it sets fake expectations. And a 17-year-old said it's too perfect, not very realistic at all, especially when it's the character's first time. I think it's kind of harder for adults today to really understand what teens are going through because um, media has just gotten a lot more risque than when even I was in high school, which was like six years ago. Developmental psychology professor Beth Daniels says, if you think back to the first run of 90210, the majority of the characters while they were in high school were not having snacks. And yet today, we see shows where it seems like the characters are not only sexually active, but having multiple partners. And that's incredibly uncommon for teenagers. When I read that quote, I thought immediately, <laughs> Gossip Girl. And look, the original Gossip Girl was definitely raunchy. I'm not contesting that. I believe it's implied that Chuck had a threesome in the first few episodes, but in saying that, I still felt overall there was still a sense of teen awkwardness in the show. Blair was waiting to lose her virginity to Nate, her long-term boyfriend. Dan was also trying to plan out the perfect first time with Serena. Granted, I didn't finish Gossip Girl, so I don't know if it got raunchier and 
is going to make me look bad when I publish this video, but at least in the first season, there is no graphic snacks. <laughs> This is compared to the pilot episode of the Gossip Girl reboot where Audrey and Aki are already going at it like bunnies. No problem reaching home base. A lot of the snacks on the old Gossip Girl were implied the screen faded to black. It was just off screen in general, which is generally what I prefer. Like I'm no prude. I know that uh, teenagers are sleeping around, but at the same time, do we really need to see it? Does it serve the plot to see it? And some of you may be thinking, why should we censor sex? It's normal human behavior. And censorship in uninformed education is why children get into dangerous situations to begin with. For one, everyone says, yes, teens are all sleeping around. But that's not actually true. Um, at least in America, the majority of students are not sleeping around. The Centers for Disease Control and Prevention's Youth Risk Behavior Survey, um, that was a mouthful, found that from 1991 to 2017, the percentage of high school students who'd had intercourse dropped from 54 to 40%. In other words, in the space of a generation, sex has gone from something most high school students have experienced to something most haven't. So I think when it comes to portraying teen antics in the media, it's important to show a balance of narratives. Yes, some kids are sleeping around, but also some kids are not. And both of those decisions that these kids are making are totally normal and totally fine. But when every character in every teen TV show is drinking, partying, doing drugs, having sex, it creates a sense that this is the norm which can make a lot of very normal high schoolers feel very abnormal. And secondly, a lot of the snacks portrayed in these shows are extremely unrealistic, and that could also be harmful. This is one of the problems that came about with the sex positivity movement. This movement really prioritized embracing your body, destigmatizing sex and kinks, and empowering women in the act. And those are all really wonderful things. But the problem I think can be summed up by this one article I read, the movement placed the onus on the woman to defy her fears instead of dismantling the patriarchal and puritanical structures that caused them in the first place. Paired with the absence of comprehensive sex ed that's not centered around abstinence, imploring women to engage in heedless sex in the name of liberation leaves young girls vulnerable to manipulation, grooming, and increased risk of STDs. A lot of these teen shows with explicit scenes do encourage sex because they show it in a very glamorized and appealing lens. But then they fail to address a lot of things that teenagers really need to know, such as consent, STI information, contraception, and even other things like uh, dysfunction, anxiety, and trauma, which are very common uh, problems that teenagers have but never get any representation in these shows. And I think that's all really dangerous because a lot of teenagers will just copy or base their expectations on what they see on TV. As illustrated by the social cognitive theory, which basically states that we pick up behaviors by observing others. And a lot of the times, what we see on TV is not reflective of what real experiences are like. This is once again why I really love the show Sex Education, because despite the fact that there is a lot of graphic snacks in the show um it's never glamorized it's always portrayed as being very awkward and fumbly because they're teenagers and honestly i cringe a lot when i watch this show because it's just so awkward but that's a good thing that really is a good thing because there's nothing more concerning than a show trying to make its audience get turned on um, from watching teenage characters hooking up. Can we change the channels? I just really don't think soft is the right tone. And I think the snack scenes really serve the plot. It's always shown intentionally to illustrate a problem that a couple is having, hence why they seek therapy. For those of you who don't know, sex education is about a high school boy whose mother is a sex therapist, so he just knows a lot from living under her roof and listening in on her sessions. He opens an informal clinic at his school where kids ask him for advice. And it would have been inappropriate if Jackson had continued to make grand gestures to a girl who made it clear she wasn't interested. Do you understand, I am? No means no. There's just really good stuff all around in that show, but enough hyping it up. Unlike sex education, I think most teen dramas like Riverdale and Euphoria are tailored for adult consumption. 
which is why the snacks are always so hot and heavy and why they feel more voyeuristic than necessary for the plot. The problem here is that teens like watching teen dramas. So even if these shows are made for adults, which honestly I do think is kind of a strange concept to think that a show centering minors would be aimed for adult viewers, but uh, even if the show is made for adults, teens will still tune in. And I was really thinking about that a lot, like the concept of teen dramas being made for adults. Like we're seeing a lot of gritty teen dramas come up these days, Riverdale, Euphoria, 13 Reasons Why, and something that TV psychologist Honey Lancaster James said really stuck with me. One of the things that we do with entertainment is we gain mastery over potentially difficult emotions. Some people wonder why anyone would ever watch a horror movie or a thriller. Why would you want to sit and be scared? But there is an element of reassurance in being able to experience those emotions from a removed perspective. And I wonder if the same can be said for teen fiction. Through the processes of empathy with a character, you're experiencing those emotions that were challenging. But now, from this more mature perspective, you're gaining an opportunity to master those emotions that you once felt so consumed by and now can have a more detached and bemused look upon that time in your life. However, for teens watching, that's not the same experience because they're currently living through it. And by showing a glamorization of trauma or unsafe practices, it can lead teens to mimic the behavior they see on screen, which would inevitably bring them along a dangerous path. And thus the sex which is there for adult audience tastes can feel exploitative. One minor also wrote to me, I feel like teenagers are a fetish for grown people who hate their early teens. All in all, what I would really like to see is more responsible storytelling. I think as an adult, we can get our hookup fix with shows centering adult characters. We don't necessarily need to see any graphic depictions to appreciate or enjoy a teen drama. And I wish networks would understand this or at least prioritize this view. Um, I don't really know how the industry works in terms of that. I don't want to put all the onus on screenwriters, but I just think the entire industry needs to start prioritizing the health of um, kids. Screenwriters, hot take, I think do have a moral obligation. And yes, art is art, but does it really affect the art to just throw in a condom? <laughs> Anyways, thank you all so much for watching. Let me know in the comments what you think about this and um, I'll see you guys next time. I hope you have a lovely rest of your day. Bye!